What's going on, growers? It's James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, me and Tucker are going to show you how to easily grow a tomato tree in five simple steps. Let's go! Right here is a Liberty apple tree, absolutely loaded with fruit. Something we're all familiar with. But what about a tomato tree loaded with fruit? That's something that may be new to you. So let me bring you over to a few tomato trees, show you what they look like, and go through the simple steps on how you could grow a tomato tree too. The first and most important step to growing a tomato tree is to choose the right variety. What we want is a hybrid cherry tomato with really good disease resistance. Right here is a sun gold cherry, probably my favorite flavored tomato, and it grows really well. The issue with this one is it just doesn't have enough blight resistance and it just gets too many blight issues later in the season. Another thing is it, it's just not prolific enough late in the summer to really give us that you know tomato tree look that we're going for. Here is a super sweet 100, an incredible overall tomato and one that everyone should be planting in the garden. But when it comes to growing tomato trees, there's one that's better than this. I just don't think this is prolific enough late in the season and it just isn't as good as my favorite variety for growing as a tomato tree, which I'll bring you over to now. Now here is what a tomato tree should look like. A massive plant growing as tall as a tree with most of its branching at the top, spreading out in all different directions, absolutely loaded with fruit. It's got like that umbrella shape. This is what you want your tomato tree to look like. And the variety that I have found that grows best as a tomato tree is this one right here, the Cherry Bomb Tomato. This variety has, and I quote, bomb proof resistance against late blight, which is super important because what you need is a tomato that will grow consistently throughout the whole season with little to no hiccups. This tomato will do that. Another thing we need is a tomato that will produce consistently throughout the whole season so that we can get some nice harvest from our tomato tree. And I quote, this tomato is said to have reliable non-stop production and I'm telling you that is true. If you want to try an heirloom or an open pollinated variety of tomato to grow a tomato tree then this variety right here will be a good candidate. This is called the blue cream berry tomato. It's open pollinated. It has really good disease resistance as you can see. So I think this would be a great tomato to grow as a tomato tree. The issue with this one right here is that I just didn't do a good enough job managing it and forming it into the shape of a tomato tree but if you want to try one I really think the blue cream berry would be an excellent choice for a tomato tree but still I'm not sure you could top the cherry bomb that thing is just immaculate I hear something in the background I'm like what's that noise it sounds like someone's chewing I look over this guy found his own carrot dug it up and is just having his fresh little snack in the garden what a cute little boy he knows just where to get his snacks it looks like he pulled one out of the ground right here if you love seeing the boss man in the videos spam some hearts down low and hit that subscribe button so whenever we post and whenever this guy gets out there and starts digging his carrots, you'll be able to see the boss at work. Me and Tuck also wanted to mention that we just dropped our fall merch and we're super proud of it. If you guys want to grab a shirt, a sweatshirt, a long sleeve shirt, check him out right now at jamespigioni.com. It's only a limited time thing. The second step to growing a tomato tree is to use the maximum amount of grow time available. If you want to grow a massive plant, then the more time you give it, the better chance it has to impress you. What you want to have is your tomatoes hardened all and ready to be put into the ground by the time the weather is suitable to get your tomatoes in. So the best thing to do in my opinion is to journal when you put your tomatoes in every single year. Then as years progress you'll have your own no notes to guide you exactly when you should get your tomatoes in. If it's only your first year growing tomatoes or you don't have past years of notes to guide you when you should put your tomatoes in, I suggest that you plant your tomatoes later rather than earlier. So if you plant your tomatoes a little late and say you miss like a week of moderate growth, that's okay. But if you plant your tomatoes too early, then that can set them back weeks and weeks or possibly even kill your tomatoes. Tomatoes are a summer plant. So if you transplant them out too early and you let the cold get to them, it can be really hard for the tomato to come back from that. So when in doubt, always plant your tomatoes out a little later. What you don't want to do is plant them out early and like erase all those weeks of work that you put into getting the tomato to this point. The third step to growing a tomato tree is to provide a strong sturdy trunk to support your heavy harvests. You need a stake that will be strong enough to support your tree all season long. In my opinion the best option is a piece of bamboo because it's got to be really long and strong. So I would say an new piece of bamboo is good. A one-year-old piece of bamboo is good. 
Once you start getting to two years, it could be getting like a little iffy because the bamboo becomes a little brittle and is liable to break under the pressure. That's what happened with this piece of bamboo and it split. So what I did is I put a splint in right here just to help support this tree to make sure it can continue to grow and produce. As the saying goes, big trees fall hard and that's exactly what happened to my cherry bomb tomato back here. So I used an old piece of bamboo that was too brittle and it snapped right at the bottom here. Now my tomato tree has fallen onto my keyhole bed and is just laying here. What I'm going to do is put a splint in and get this thing straightened back up. If you don't have a piece of bamboo to stake your tomato tree up with, you can use a piece of untreated lumber like this and just rip it down so it's more cost effective. I've done this before with my squash, as you can see right here. It works well, and when you rip the piece down, it makes it so it's more cost effective. So it's definitely worth it. The trick is though, to go around your local neighborhood, like whenever you're driving or anything, just keep your eyes peeled. See if you can find someone that is growing some bamboo. Because the bamboo is so invasive that a lot of times people don't have any issue with you coming in, taking some of the bamboo off their hands, it just like uh, basically makes less work for them. So make sure you knock on the door first, but I get my bamboo locally just from, you know, driving around, finding people and ask if I can take the bamboo. So you should try it. There we go, all staked up. Just use this piece of wood, untreated, and then use some of these zip ties here. Now take a look at it. Tomato tree is standing once again. This is why it's important to make sure you use either new or one-year-old bamboo. Once it starts getting a few years older, it just gets a little too brittle for how much weight this actually is. The fourth step to growing a tomato tree is to prune early and often. If you want that true tree look, what you need to do is prune your tomato to one central leader. So as you see those little suckers start to arrive at the crotch of the branches, you wanna pop those off with your finger when they're still small. If you need a pruner to cut those suckers out, then you're already waiting too long. You want to remove all the suckers and just allow that one top to grow up the stake. Then as it starts to reach higher up on your stake, almost the top, what you do is you allow the suckers to grow up top there. What this does is it forces the plant to produce a lot of flowers and a lot of fruit, and then it gives you that sort of cascading look, that true tree look. And it basically just looks like, you know, a fruit tree loaded with fruit. One tool that is really important for growing tomato trees is these tomato clips right here. They work so well and they're so convenient for tying up your tomatoes. It makes it so incredibly easy and it just makes the whole process, you know, enjoyable to do. So for the cost of them, they're definitely worth it because they provide an incredible amount of value. I'll put a link down in the description so you could try some of these if you want, but this is what I use to make sure I keep my tomatoes staked up to the plant and it's just so quick and so easy to do. The fifth step to growing a tomato tree may seem obvious, but it's vitally important. And the fifth step is to create an ideal growing environment. So what we want to do is make sure we have a thick mulch down underneath our tomatoes. What this will do is it will help keep the ground consistently moist and will also help keep the temperature consistent. Another thing we want to do is to make sure that we fertilize our plants if we see any yellowing in the leaves just to make sure we can continue to support how much growth and production this thing's going to put out. The next thing we need to do is we need to stay on top of watering, especially when the tree heads into production. As these tomatoes start to head into production, they're gonna need a lot more water to maintain all that fruit. So we want to make sure we stay on top of the watering consistently. And the last thing that we need to do is we need to make sure we're removing any diseased or um, you know any branches or leaves that have any kind of fungal issues on them. Even though these are disease resistant tomatoes, we wanna make sure that we don't have like have to make them kind of fight off any issues. What we want these trees to focus on is two things, growth and production. You may be asking yourself, why grow a tomato like a tree? What's even the point of it? Well, let me show you right down here what happens if you don't grow your tomato up stakes like a tree. This is what happens when you let tomatoes sprawl along the ground. So when you let them sprawl, they're much easier for critters to get to because they're just laying on the ground like this. There's less airflow and less light penetration. 
So when you have less airflow, less light, that leads to more fungal issues. The other thing is when you have them sprawling on the ground, they're harder to get the harvest from. And it's just more inconvenient to manage because if you do want to get a harvest, you got to get on your hands and knees, crawl around and look for some of these instead of just reaching up and grabbing some delicious fresh tomatoes. Tomato trees, on the other hand, only take up one square foot of space. They're easier to manage, easier to get harvest from and just a true joy to watch grow. If you're a new gardener and you really want to impress your friends, this is the way to do it and you'll get fantastic harvest from it also. So in my opinion, if you want to grow some great tomatoes, you're better off treating your tomatoes less like a vine and more like a tree. Another thing you could do if you want uh, come down here is what I did is I grew this tomato like a tree. Yeah, up a stake, but then also I allowed this tomato to root under under the ground here and then sprawl along the ground. So what we're doing is we're getting the best of both worlds. We're allowing the tomato to grow up like a tree and then we're also letting some of it sprawl along the ground like a vine. It's important that the part that I let sprawl along the ground, that rooted in the ground. So this, part, this tomato is essentially a separate tomato and it's not taking or pulling any energy from my tomato tree. In the future, like next year, what I'm going to do to grow some tomato trees is I'm going to actually graft some of my favorite varieties onto a cherry bomb rootstock and onto a rootstock, the Maxifort, which is specifically designed to add disease resistance and add production and just extend the harvest of a tomato, also adding some plant vigor. So just like this tomato right here, what I did is I grafted this uh, red zebra tomato to this blue cream, be uh, blue cream berry variety. But what I'm going to do next year, like I said, is I'm gonna take one of my favorite varieties, like the sun gold cherry, which doesn't grow as well as a tomato tree because it has the late blight issues. I'm going to take that variety, graft it onto the Maxifort rootstock, and then get that added disease resistance that comes from the Maxifort rootstock. So very similar to something like my Honeycrisp ap apple tree. I'm just gonna take a page out of that book where you take like a Honeycrisp apple and graft that onto like an M26 apple rootstock. This way you get all the benefits of the rootstock, but the, the delicious fruit of the Honeycrisp apple. I'm going to do the same thing with my tomato trees next year. That's today's video girls. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. This guy was out here the whole time getting thirsty. We're going to fill him up a little water. So me and Tuck ho hope uh, that you guys really enjoyed this video. We did the tomato tree video last year. We had a number of people asking how they can grow tomato trees too. So it's so fun to grow uh, something like a vine in the shape of a tree because it's just so shocking to people. But not only is it like shocking, it also works incredibly well. So it's, you know, a benefit in so many different ways. It's much easier to manage your tomatoes with just those clips growing them up a stake. It's just convenient in every single way. Me and Tuck wanted to mention before we let you go that we just dropped some new merch, this fall merch at jamespagioni.com. It's a limited time thing. So grab a shirt, grab a long sleeve, grab a sweatshirt while you still can. This guy was such a big help out here. We're fortunate for him being out here and being part of the team, but we're also fortunate for some of our new channel members like Douglas Foster. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for contributing. Thanks for having your hand in all the different things that we that we're doing back here. So if you guys wanna join Team Grow, hit the join now bu button or just grab one of the shirts at jamesprigioni.com. Tuck and James will be back to you again real soon. We out.